All right, are we live? Okay, I think we are good. Hang on just a minute, everybody. Uh, let me go ahead and... Okay, can you hear me too? All right, cool. Thank you, everybody, for being so patient with this. Um, can't tell you how frustrating that was. There's a very specific kind of dance that you gotta do with all of these different services to get them to all work in conjunction with each other. There's seriously like, it feels like a hundred steps. Um, but we got it. So, uh, and let's see. And now for some reason this isn't working now. Turn that off. Um, let's see here. Why is Twitch not working properly? Oh, shoot. I gotta close that. And then open up my Twitch dashboard. Hang on just a second, everybody. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and you know what? I can actually just use that other thing instead. So hang on just a minute. Um, stream elements overlays. There we go. And then open up my chat app. There we go. All right, hang on a minute. Um, split screen. There we are. So hopefully I should be able to hear the notification sounds too, if everything goes according to plan. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Wait, why is this not working now? Let's see. And you do hear cars passing by. There are some cars behind me. Hang on just a minute. Uh, let me get this packed up for the moment, and, uh, let's see, put on my pack. Oof. Ah, there we go. Oh, and there goes my mic. I to figure out a better way to rig that up. Again, testing everything today, so I appreciate your patience and your understanding. Um, but yeah. Oops, and this is supposed to go around the other side. Hang on just a minute. Got to swing here. Huh? There we go. Yeah. It's going to be kind of a clumsy stream. Getting all this stuff set up for the first time. All in conjunction. It is a pretty complicated setup, as you might imagine. Um, but yeah, yeah. And let me lock this. There we go. Cool. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Oops. <laughs> Be careful on those low-hanging branches. I'm gonna turn screen rotation off. There we go. I don't know why, but my mobile data isn't working for the moment. So hang on just a minute. I see some pelicans right there. Holy cow, you see the pelicans? <laughs> yeah, that's what we came here for. Beautiful. Nice little V formation. Wow. Some lovely living dinosaurs. And it's one of the largest volant birds in North America. Uh, actually, one of the largest birds in North America, period. We don't really have many flightless birds here. Um, but yeah. Let's see. Uh, refresh this page so I can actually hear the notifications. And that's just not working. That's really frustrating. Mm 
button. I gotta open that up in here. Open. There we go. Let's see. That's the one. Okay, hopefully this works. Here, let's test a notification real quick and uh, see if I got that working. Um, let's see here. Let me know if that works. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, let me know if that notification came through. And I might have to turn on the low latency mode for this. Um, let's see. Open that up. Back. Devices. Let's try load delay mode real quick. Hopefully this doesn't mess anything up. I don't know if that's going to work. That's eh, just not going to work. Mm -hmm. Go. Okay. And then for this, let's see. Open up the chat. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I can hear you, but it's a bit static. Okay, Fossil. That's interesting. Welcome back, by the way. Hey, let me do a little formal welcome to everybody. Uh, I'm here on Alameda Island right now, not too far from where I live in Oakland, California. What you see behind me is the Oakland Alameda Estuary. Um, it's a really cool bridge over there that we're gonna walk across. The only, well, one of the only pedestrian drawbridges in the continental United States, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, it's not an antenna, it's a dinosaur tranquilizer. <laughs> this is my antenna for the uh, signal booster that I got for this. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, we're gonna see how well it works here. Maybe I could, I wish I could, like, give you a tour of, uh, of everything. Maybe if I extend the camera far enough, you can actually see. But there's the antenna right there. That red thing on the back is the actual signal booster, which connects to a secondary power source. So I've got two different batteries that are powering this whole setup right now. Um, the, uh, signal booster has its own transmitting antenna, which is affixed to the wireless modems um, that give me the mobile data that run this setup right now. It's what's allowing me to stream to you live when I'm out of range of Wi-Fi or anything like that. Um, and it's funny, I had to set up like a, almost like a Faraday cage over that to keep the antenna from interfering, from the receiving antenna, from interfering with the transmitting antenna. It's a whole thing. But anyway, we've got some other pelicans flying overhead right now. Take a look at them. Yeah, brown pelicans. Beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. Um, back where I was trained at Museum of the Rockies, there's kind of a tradition slash good-natured superstition that, uh, that pelicans are good luck. Anytime that you see pelicans in a day's field work, it's going to be a good day. So I think that's a pretty good omen for this stream, despite all the technical difficulties we've had so far. But we're up and running now. Um, but yeah, that's what you're here for? All right, Green Panther, awesome. Well, we're going to see a lot more. Uh, but yeah. And let's see. 
You're seeing dinosaurs, dinosaurs, aka birds. That's right, Alpha Zulu. Yes. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, I figure we're gonna go ahead and cross this bridge real quick first, and then uh, after that, we'll go hit the beach and uh, see some of these birds and other critters. I saw some ground squirrels this morning. I saw a tree squirrel. Uh, we're gonna see some cool stuff, but first off, let's walk across that bridge. Yeah, let's see. And yeah, there's a the wind weasel is like twice as big as the camera. If I had a mirror, I could show you right now. Um, but yeah, it's a big fuzzy thing that's seriously bigger than the camera is. So uh, yeah. So how's everybody doing so far today? Hope you're all having a lovely day so far. Uh, thank you again for being here and for waiting, what, like over an hour um, from the scheduled start of this stream for me to get this ready. Um, really glad we finally tackled it. It is kind of a windy day today, so if you're hearing some wind, that's why. Uh, yeah, anyway. Right now, going underneath the Bay Farm Island Bridge. It connects Alameda to Bay Farm Island. Uh, you may have actually been to Bay Farm Island without even realizing it. If you've ever flown into Oakland, Oakland International Airport is on Bay Farm Island, right over there. So we're gonna go walk across, and uh, yeah, should be should be pretty scenic, I think. Let's see. And Solid Gray Fox. Hey, is it your first time here? Welcome to paleontologizing, if that's the case. Um, yeah. Pre, pre breakfast banana. <laughs> I don't fight dinosaurs, I dig them up. I'm not doing that today, but we're going to be seeing some living dinosaurs, by which, of course, I mean birds. So I was hoping to get here right during low tide, but the technical difficulties kind of threw us off a little bit. The tide's coming up. So we might not see as many any shorebirds as I, uh, as I was hoping, but we'll see some. All right, just to show you where we're going right now. There is the Bay Farm Island pedestrian bridge. Oh, and there's a little ground squirrel over here. Hello, ground squirrel. Hello to you. <laughs> Up there by that orange cone. Very cool. I'm not going to bother you. you go about your business. So, yeah. I see some other ground squirrels right up ahead. I just learned recently that ground squirrels apparently, they live communally. They're not like tree squirrels. They, they basically live in like a colony where there's a bunch of individuals. I'm not even sure if they're related to one another necessarily. And uh, they all kind of work to gather food together and uh, clean their burrows and that kind of thing. Kind of like prairie dogs do. Let's see. Look at this. Check that out. That is San Leandro Bay over there. Very, very cool. That is uh, the Oakland Coliseum. That's where the Oakland A's play there in the distance. I wonder if you can see it. But, uh, yeah. Oops. Pretty neat. Doing my best to stay out of the way of these bicyclists over here. Be kind of amazed at how rude bicyclists can be sometimes um, when you're a pedestrian. But I'm trying to take up as little space as I can right here. Yeah, and so right now, this is actually the drawbridge portion of the bridge between Alameda 
Laguna and Bay Farm Island. So this all right here is a movable span, which is pretty cool. I think it's one of only two. Oh, I can hear the notifications. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you uh, for the follow, whoever that was. Um, yeah. Let's see. You try to be considerate for cyclists? Yeah, I used to bike all over the place too. And I like, I don't know, it's kind of funny. Cyclists can be really rude to other cyclists too. You know, I just try to give everybody space. And the really, the worst thing though is like motorists being rude to cyclists and nearly killing them. So I guess in the grand scheme of things, can't really blame the bicyclists. But yeah. How's the video looking by the way? Is the lens nice and clean? No smudges or anything like that? Yeah, and you're not getting the notifications? Oh shoot, Claire. Uh, that's the thing is that like there's multiple layers that you'll have to stack on top of one another. And you have to do it in a very specific order and they don't tell you what that order is. So you've just got to do it all by trial and error. And uh, yeah. So that's unfortunate. Um, I would try and change it using my phone, but it doesn't let you. Uh, you have to do it from, like, a desktop browser. So, yeah. Doing my best to stay out of the way here. Yeah, I've got some more pelicans over there. Oh, man, this is cool. Video looks great. Thanks, Humphrey Panda. Yeah. Um, I want to to thank you for the 100 bits. I really appreciate that. Man, I'm sorry the notifications aren't working. It's uh, uh, another thing to work out, but it's a good thing I'm testing it today. Anyway, now on Bay Farm Island, and there's all these little swallows flying around. If, one, if a few come by, I, I could show you. Um, I assume they're barn swallows. I doubt they're tree swallows. Usually, uh, I don't know, barn swallows are the more common ones. There's one right there. See a few of them flitting around. There's the more pelicans up there. Man, makes me so happy to see pelicans. Um, but yeah, yeah. So again, this is Bay Farm Island over here we're walking to. Which, oddly enough, looking into this, Bay Farm Island is considered part of the city of Alameda, even though Alameda occupies a different island over there. That's Alameda. So, yeah. Weird how this sort of thing can work. Let's see. They fly around like F-22s. They do. The swallows, they're amazingly maneuverable. You know what they remind me of? Our uh, Harrier jets. Um, like in footage from the, the Falklands War or the La Guerra de las Malvinas if you're Argentinian uh, but yeah yeah they have that same kind of like they hold their wings at sort of a down angle and they kind of like they do a lot of banking um, yeah they're really cool swallows are amazing birds they catch their food in midair so kind of like fly catchers they'll you know, zoom around and catch insects on the wing. Pretty cool. Uh, barn swallows have a, a particularly, well, like a special place in my heart, I guess, because uh, we had a family of barn swallows back when I was doing field work in the Hell Creek. Um, we actually got to stay in a barn for a number of summers, which was really cool. We actually had a roof over our head. And uh, we watched a family of barn swallows raise like two or three broods of chicks over the course of the summer. It was kind of magical. It's watching these birds grow up and, uh, you know, eventually, like, gain the confidence to start trying to fly, and they fledge, and then they're gone. Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, swallows are really cool, Bonaparte, exactly. Uh, oh, and fossil vet? Yeah, yeah, I found paleo. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, let's see. 
didn't they film Star Trek Four there? I'm not sure. Invisible Dimensions. You mean in uh, on Bay Farm Island or the San Francisco Bay Area? I don't know. I'm gonna walk over there and then it's a little bit hazy, but I'll sh try and show you a view of San Francisco just across the bay. And uh, yeah. Let's see. Does anybody know what this plant is right here? Check this out. I think I know the species, but I know the general variety. Um, this is an oak. I think this is a coast live oak. This is what they look like when they're small. Um, the leaves are all curled up. I would say I don't think it's been getting enough water, but it's right here next to the, I don't know. Maybe the brackish water in the bay isn't very good for them or something. But it's, it's making a go of it there. Yeah. Oh, cool, Shogun. 227. You were at Concord Naval Station in the 80s? Is that... That's in, uh, in Concord, California, right? Like, um... Shoot, what's it called? Um... Port Chicago, maybe? I know that's where there, there was like a massive... Uh, munitions dump disaster back during World War II where like I don't know how many people died when this, um, this place where they store all this ammunition just exploded over in uh, in Concord California that's that way in like the far East Bay over the hills um, is that Concord Naval Station I don't know there's a lot of different towns named Concord so, yeah um, I'm cool, Chameleon. Hey, I'm glad you could be here. Yeah, I'm going to be having more more streams like this earlier on in the day throughout the summer. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a sign of things to come. Yeah, and Shogun says, yeah, oh, interesting, okay, yeah. Uh, streams like this wouldn't be able to have captions? Oh, I'm, sh I'm sorry, Izzy, I don't think... I don't think a mobile live stream like this will have captions. Uh, unless I were to use Twitch Studio, but I don't think that would work with this kind of a setup. I'm sorry, Izzy. You know what? I'll look into that. Maybe there's a way to, uh, to get that to work. And thank you for the follow, whoever that was. Oh, thank you for the resub there, Phoenix. I really appreciate that. I don't know, I guess you can't see the notifications right now. It's something I gotta work out, but I can hear them in the earpiece, which is cool. Uh, and thanks, my shadow, I appreciate that. Yeah, this hat, holy cow. I bet you this hat is actually older than some of the people watching right now. Um, I got this hat in probably 2006. Um, and it's been with me through all different kinds of adventures. Pretty much every time I've, got, I've done field work, it's been actually every single time I've ever done field work. I've had this hat with me. It served me very well. Another oak over here. This has got to be a different species. Like the leaves are less crenulated around the the edges. I don't know enough about oaks. Oaks are such a an integral part of uh, Bay Area landscapes and ecology. Um, I really need to learn more about them. Anyway, I'm not sure if you can see over there when I when I turn the camera around, but if you squint, you might be able to catch a glimpse of the San Francisco skyline. Over there, can you see it? Let me know if you can see San Francisco off in the distance. There's the financial district. Sutro Tower is over there on that hill. Um, yeah. So we are right in the heart of the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, this is such a beautiful place. I feel really fortunate to be able to live here. Um, I grew up in the Bay Area, and, uh, you know, I moved to Montana right after high school. I lived there for the better part of a decade, and Montana has its charms. Montana's a beautiful place. It certainly has more dinosaurs than California, but, wow, I really think you just kind of can't beat the Bay Area. Look at that. It's a brown pelican right over there. Look at it skim so low across the water. Like, the ends of those primary feathers have got to be getting a little bit damp. 
<laughs> I wonder if that's if that's how they maintain altitude. Maybe they can feel with the tips of their feathers when they're raking across the wave tops. And uh, I don't know, or maybe it's just it's the way that uh, air currents work as they kind of push up from the waves or something like that. I don't know. I'm not a physicist. <laughs> Yeah, you can see it a tiny bit? Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Hey, Sarah Holcomb. <laughs> Welcome back to Paleontologizing. How you doing, Sarah? Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, oh, and thank you for the follow, whoever that was. I appreciate it. Sorry you can't hear the notifications. This is all work in progress. Um, yeah. Uh, but which bird species is my favorite, asks uh, Solid Gray Fox. Well, do I have to pick an extant bird? Or can I pick one that's extinct? Um, I'll pick an extant bird just to narrow things down, a bird that's still around today. Uh, I'd probably have to say the southern cassowary. Um, yeah. Uh, might also, well, it often gets called the, the world's deadliest bird, which is kind of funny. Well, it's not funny for the people who get killed by them, but I don't know. They're just really fascinating animals. Cassowaries. Uh, if you're not familiar with a cassowary, picture like a... Picture an emu, but make it really angry. Give it like a little bony crest over the top of its head. And some like brightly colored neck skin. Uh, usually it's kind of blue and red. And... Uh, give it a huge deadly claw on its uh, on its second toe and you've got a cassowary. They're really, really cool birds. Native to Australia and uh, New Guinea. But yeah. Anyway, I think that's pretty much the extent of the interesting things we're going to see on Bay Farm Islands. We're going to turn around, walk back to Alameda, and then we'll go along the shoreline there and I'll point out some birds and some plants and maybe a mammal or two. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Someone mentioned an emu in chat earlier. What were they talking about emu-wise? <laughs> uh, it is a beautiful day today. Can somebody do the uh, the weather command for Alameda? Walking Wi-Fi beacon, exactly, pragmatic entropy. And I'm not even at full power yet. Um, the uh, the little like router um, puck that I have, uh, that I should be running my phone off of, that's not working yet. And I was on the phone with tech support before the stream trying to get it to work. And uh, apparently the, I don't know, they goofed something up with the serial number. So at least it's not my fault. But uh, yeah, eventually I won't even have to run my phone off of data or anything. It'll all be running off of this setup. And uh, well, the really cool thing about this, I don't know if I can, I can't do that right now. I can't reach back that far. But this antenna that I have right here, I rigged it up to an old uh, light tripod. And so I can extend this thing probably a good 10 feet in the air. So when I'm really out in the middle of nowhere, hopefully that'll give me just just enough signal to be able to stream even from some pretty remote areas. So, yeah. Um, what I'm doing? Oh, thanks, Prankster. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Wanapati. Yeah, USS Hornet's really cool. I've been there a number of times. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, the, the last time that I actually, like, toured the USS Hornet, um, I was there with well, okay, I, here, let me lay the scene. It was, uh, this must have been, well, like, November or December, I think? And they were having the great big, um, uh, the, like, Army versus Navy, like, college football game. Um, and so that was being broadcast at the same time. I think it was on, like, a Sunday. And, uh... So I happened to be there for the tour while that was going on. And of course, the USS Hornet is this great big World War II uh, US aircraft carrier. 
it's now been uh, like docked on the north end of Alameda for I don't know how many years um, but it's a museum ship now and uh, so I was there with somebody uh, and she was a uh, like a US Army officer um, I don't know, she'd done that in college and you know she'd risen up through the ranks a little bit and uh, there are all of these like Navy families there visiting the Hornet and they're I'm sure have like memberships to the museum and so they would go there all the time and they had set up this great big screen, projector screen and all these seats and they're all watching the Army Navy game. And uh, and yeah, and so my friend, she uh, she's like, oh, let's just go sit down for a while and, and watch. And they actually had like separate seating areas for the Navy people and the Army people. And so like we were the only people sitting in the Army section. Um, and that was the year that the Army won that game. And so everybody was really mad at us. And uh, I don't know. I don't have a horse in that fight, but it was uh, it was a good time nonetheless. It was it was kind of amusing. Um, but really cool. If you ever get a chance to visit the USS Hornet, it's it's really neat. It's astonishing how big that ship is. Like they they have a bunch of things roped off so that you don't wander around because people have gotten lost in there, and like it's taken days to find them. Um, it is a truly enormous vessel. Uh, I'm not used to that. I've toured like submarines before, which tend to be really small and compact. Aircraft carriers are just totally different. Um, yeah. Let's see. And yeah, the extension pragmatic entropy. Yep, I've got two of them on there, so I can extend this thing probably an extra six feet. Um, yeah. A dinosaur museum ship? No, Green Panther. It's a U.S. naval ship. Mm -hmm. now, let's see here. People getting lost in an old aircraft carrier. It wasn't hilarious to those people. Oh, man. Uh, but, yeah. Like, who was just wandering off into an aircraft carrier? Well, I don't know. I would if given a chance to explore it, but they warn you against that repeatedly when you take a tour. Like, do not wander off. You will get lost. Um, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, and I do live in the Bay Area. Yeah. And Alex Meester, I've... I don't know if I've ever hiked to Mission Peak. I actually know of a couple different Mission Peaks. Are you talking about the one in the city? Are you talking about the one uh, near Marin? talking about the one in the South Bay. There's a few different ones that I know of. But yeah, I live over in Oakland, so I'm not too far from home right now. Um, and my airspace, yeah, USS Missouri, that's a that's a historic ship. Holy cow. That's the one where the, the Articles of Surrender were signed um, uh, at the end of uh, the Pacific War, 1945, uh, in Tokyo Harbor, Tokyo Bay. Amazing, it's just gigantic ship. Um, but yeah. Anyway, let's continue on. I should have the size of Costco too. <laughs> Gen C, you're right. Yeah. Uh, near Fremont. Oh, interesting, Alex. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've never been to that one. I don't spend much time in the South Bay, to be honest. Um, or the North Bay. I don't know. I live in the East Bay. I worked in the city for a long time. So, the oh, Bay Area is big. There's a lot to see. I'll give you another view of the Bay Farm Island Bridge that we're going to go walk across. That's the uh, car section right there, but you see the blue one underneath? That's the pedestrian bridge we're going to be walking across. Um, this is interesting. I hope we don't have any chemists here in chat, because this is going to rankle you. Um, <laughs> Fish smart in San Francisco Bay. Uh, eat this, less chemicals. Not this, more chemicals. Um, so as any chemist or probably any scientist could tell you, Everything is made out of chemicals. Like, I don't know, it, it irks me when people use the word chemicals as a shorthand for, like, you know, harmful substances. 
because, you know, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I wonder, I wonder how true this is, that rockfish and halibut and uh, red rock crab, maybe they're, they don't bioaccumulate as many, like, heavy metals or something like that, like sharks or sturgeon or striped basswood. I suppose those are more predatory fishes, and so they're consuming other fishes and kind of accumulating more of uh, those harmful substances in their bodies over time, um, like mercury and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, heavy metals, yeah, mayor space, yep. Um, an interesting Medusa has it done. Wow. The, when you're in Cincinnati, very interesting. Is there a, a, a fossil museum in Cincinnati? I know Cleveland has a pretty decent one. I have some friends who used to work there. Um, well, that's kind of cool. They were hanging onto those fossils, providing temporary storage while the museum was being worked on. Um, and Green Panthera, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't eat any fish that come out of the bay. Uh, at least because I don't, I don't really eat fish. Um, hey, Alexi Flex. How are you doing? Welcome. This is the first uh, mobile data live stream that I've ever done. So yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, let's see here. Mm -hmm. And wonderful for you. I got to do something about this because it like I don't want it to look scary, <laughs> like a, a sniper rifle or something. Like I need to put a little flag on it or something. Because it looks a little bit too uh, serious right now. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the stuff that I have on right now is like military surplus gear. Um, so I'm going to be making some modifications to uh, kind of give everything a more friendly sort of look, you know. Um, but yeah. Uh, works excellent? Yeah, I sell it. Thank you. Pretty happy with this so far. Put a dino head on it. <laughs> Uh, as long as it doesn't impede the signal, maybe. I don't know. I think a, uh, if I had more time before I was leaving for the field, I'd put, like, some sort of flag on it or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I could, like, order a, uh, I don't know, uh, like some custom fabric or something like that. Like where I used to get my research posters printed. Here's a free tip for anybody, whoever has to give like a poster presentation at like a research conference or anything like that, especially if you have to travel a long distance. Um, usually, you know, you get your poster printed on paper and then you've got to carry a big stupid poster tube with you on the plane and it's just a big pain in the butt. But nowadays you can actually get your poster printed like a one-off on-demand printing on fabric. And that way you just, you know, roll it up, you throw it in your carry-on bag. And, uh, yeah, it lasts a lot longer than a typical research poster would. You don't have to carry the poster tube. That doesn't have to be your carry-on item. Um, and it's usually cheaper than printing on paper, too, which is surprising. You do have to provide a little bit more lead time. But there are websites where you can just print custom fabric and, you know... Just print a research poster on it. I've done that before, and it is great. So that's something I've been thinking about, actually, is uh, when conferences really start up again, in-person conferences, um, I might do some poster design live on stream and talk about that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, because I think the design of research posters is something that doesn't really get enough consideration. I feel like that could be a fun thing to talk about on stream. Um, make it kind of a collaborative process. It could be pretty neat. Let's see. Oh, and uh, thank you, Claire. Iridani asks, uh, Melody8 wants to know how many dinosaur bones I've dug up. Wow, Melody, that is a fantastic question. Thank you for asking it. And sorry it took me a minute to get to your question. Sometimes that happens here. Uh, how many dinosaur bones have I dug up? That's a great question. I want to say... One time I actually ran the numbers. This was years ago. And I think I'd counted like about 
it was like 315 different dinosaur sites I had worked at. Um, and a dinosaur site could be anything from like, you know, we found a couple of teeth here to we found multiple skeletons in the same spot. And so the number of dinosaur bones I've dug up is definitely more than the number of sites that I've worked. So I don't know, at least five or six hundred different dinosaur bones, at least. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Definitely dug up my my fair number of dinosaur bones, and if you if you count teeth as bones too, um, which you know, it's up to you whether or not you consider teeth bones for a question like this. But if we count teeth, then it's like well over a thousand, definitely. Um, yeah. All right, we are still here on Bay Farm Island right now, but. Uh, a lovely eucalyptus tree right here. There's the bridge. We're going to go walk across in a little bit. And then right over there, again, is the Oakland Coliseum, where the Oakland A's baseball team plays. I think it's like the last sports team that Oakland still has. And this is San Leandro Bay out here. And look, there's some kayakers out there. And I've been kayaking through here a number of times, and it is, it is a great place just go, I don't know, kind of explore, relax, kind of commune with the local wildlife, especially the birds. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember one of my first times ever kayaking out in the Oakland Estuary. Um, I had this little inflatable kayak, and uh, still kind of new to kayaking. I'd never taken any lessons or anything like that. Uh, so I was still a little bit unsure of myself. And I'm paddling along, water's getting kind of shallow. And then I just see this big, wide, gray thing just go... <sighs> like, silently cruise under the bow of the kayak. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, for just like a split second, I knew it was some kind of big elasmobranch fish. Some kind of you know, cartilaginous fish, like a shark, or a ray, and it turned out to be a big old bat ray, and its head was probably like, you know, wider than my hand, with uh, fingers outstretched. It was big. Um, so that was pretty neat, yeah. It really scared me for about half a second until I realized what it was, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know, it was pretty special. All right, we're coming back on the uh, pedestrian drawbridge between Bay Farm Island and Alameda. We're going to go cross over to the Alameda side. Man, it's a beautiful day. Welcome back. Good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. Yeah. And Aditya, I don't know Dustin. No. Yeah, I don't really spend that much time on like Paleo YouTube as much as a lot of other people seem to. Um, what does Dustin work on, I wonder? And yeah, Demented Hazard beautiful day today. Welcome to paleontologizing, by the way. We're going to actually go down to the beach here on Alameda. And I'll show you around. Hopefully we'll see some cool birds and some cool mammals. Yeah, and my own sling. Yeah, new setup is working pretty well. It's not at 100% yet. The notifications still aren't working properly. And, uh, uh, one of my, it's only, only two of my three, uh, data modems are up and running. But, and I'm wondering how much of a difference this whole antenna setup actually makes. I'm not really sure. But, yeah. And Izzy wants to know, what's the best beach for finding megalodon teeth? Oh, man. Um, maybe somewhere in, like, South Carolina. 
Uh, yeah, I've got some friends who who work at the museum in uh, in Charleston, and they find megalodon teeth all the time. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like that, I'd encourage you to uh, to follow at Coastal Paleo on Twitter, uh, Bobby Bosenacker, and follow Sarah Bosenacker too. They're kind of a paleo power couple, um, but they work at the museum there. Uh, Bobby actually studies fossil whales. He calls himself a whaleontologist. But uh, he's done some work on Megalodon as well. I think he published on Megalodon just last year. So, yeah. And yeah, oh, no one's looking at me funny? Good. That's good to hear, Claire. <laughs> I don't know, it's the Bay Area. People have probably seen live stream gear setups before. Um, yeah, I don't know. And there you go, <laughs> there you go, Lordy, exactly, yeah. One of the reasons I love the Bay Area. All different kinds of people here. Um, yeah, yeah. It's certainly not like Montana in that regard. Go to the eastern part of the state. And, uh, I don't know. People look at you funny for what seems like no reason. Let me get some water real quick. Can't believe I haven't done that yet. Has nobody redeemed a hydrate? Hmm. And Yogurt Garrel, yeah. Beautiful sunny day today. Uh, can we get the weather command again? Could you do that, Claire, for, uh, for Alameda? Um, but yeah. There's rivers we can find good bank teeth too? Exactly, Mayor Space, yeah, absolutely. Um, the thing about Megalodon teeth is that they're pretty recent in the grand scheme of things. They're from like, well, like the Miocene to the Pliocene. And so there's still a lot of exposed rock around. You don't have to necessarily go all that far to be able to find stuff like that. It's big parts of the US and other countries too, where a lot of those rocks are just, you know, exposed in riverbanks or, you know, in rivers <laughs> or on beaches. And yeah. Oh, who's that over there? There is a cormorant just took off. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure we'll see some more of those in just a minute. One of my favorite shorebirds. 76. Wow, I thought it was warmer than 70. Forecast was for 70 today. Uh, Izzy says, isn't that the military backpack? It is a, well, I don't know if it's true military surplus, but it's built to look like that. I've used this bag as a field bag before. It's very versatile. I like it a lot. Um, ooh, and we've got a gull over there snacking on some other kind of bird. Huh. Is that a dove? What have you got, Mr. Gull? Or Ms. Gull? Maybe we'll go get closer and take a look. See some scavenging birds. Uh... Oh, cool, Mr. Ictan. Hey, welcome. It's good to see you. Yeah. Where did you go in California when you were here, Mr. Ictan? I'd love to know. Um, I agree there. <laughs> well, that's the thing about camelbacks is you can't really put... Uh, you're not supposed to put flavored stuff in it or sugary stuff. Because it goes bad pretty quickly. I'm walking under this willow tree. And, uh, let's go say hi to this gull. Say hi without being too intrusive. Don't want to be harassing the wildlife. Yeah. I don't know how well you can see right there. It's got something. Yeah, that's a fish. Wow. 
lucky bird. Well, we'll leave her to enjoy that. And uh, I see some ground squirrels up ahead. I see some other birds. Let's go see who's over there. Let's see. Oh, you have one? There you go, is he? Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, system seems to be working so far, Mikey Lex. <laughs> At least mostly. Got a few kinks to work out. The notification setup is not working right now. Actually, you know what? Um, iOS, are you still here right now? I think I have you as an editor on the stream. Could you take the notifications part out of the title, if you don't mind? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny, I haven't seen many planes taking off yet. Because Oakland Airport, Oakland International, is right over there behind me. And normally there's all kinds of planes taking off. So far I've only seen a couple of little prop planes. Ooh, there's a big old ground squirrel in there. Ground squirrel. I'm gonna shake him. Yeah. I don't know if you can see right now. Hopefully it's not too dark under that rock. Yeah. Be nifty. The ground squirrels around here get pretty big. It's we thought they were a lot smaller in Montana. Logan, yeah. <laughs> and hey, Polar Bear, how are you doing? Welcome back, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Wind's picking up, hopefully. The wind noise isn't too bad. Oh, we've got another flight of pelicans behind me there. You see them? <laughs> uh, beautiful. They're such cool critters. Love how they fly in formation like that. And is it? Yeah, water's really beautiful here. It's not even like particularly pretty right now, to be honest. I was hoping to hit this at low tide, because um, the tides are actually pretty dramatic here. So again, there's Bear from Ireland, where we were just a little while ago. I walked out to about there, and we turned around. There's that bridge. And there's some pelican friends. But, uh, you see all these concrete slabs down here all broken up, covered with various encrusting invertebrates? Uh, normally, at low tide, if you go out that way, you know, you could, you could walk out a good, you know, 20, 30, maybe 40 meters. Um, just on, you know, I wouldn't say dry sand, but kind of wet muck. So we're approaching high tide right now. It's shifting pretty quickly today. Yeah. Pelican has landed, yeah, Phoenix. <laughs> Walking past some houses right now, and then we're gonna get over to uh, where there's some restored marshland. Let's see if we can see some cool birds. Uh, and there's a plane taking off too from uh, Oakland International. It's about delivery. That's a Southwest plane. Southwest Airlines. Not like it's headed southwest. But yeah, it's headed north right now. And I'm thinking about how to get those notifications to work.
I'm not sure. That's going to require some more testing. I don't know how I'm going to do that unless I'm live. I'll figure it out. I might have to set up like a secret Twitch account with the stream key and everything and test it on there. Ugh. <laughs> There's no instructions for these things. Just got to figure everything out for yourself, you know? Uh, and TNT gun blow? No, I haven't seen any birds of prey yet. Unless you count that gull. <laughs> but no. No raptors, no hawks, no eagles, no osprey. But maybe we'll see some. Nancy Black says, is this the side of the bay where the unescapable prison is? You mean uh, Alcatraz? I'll show you. Well, Alcatraz is off in that direction. Um, it is like between San Francisco and uh, and the North Bay and the East Bay. Um, if we were walking along the Embarcadero in San Francisco, I could point to it and show you. But uh, that's way over there. It's kind of around the corner. We won't be able to see it from here. It's a little too far. And it's not the clearest day today either. So even if we did have a clear, have a clear view of that area, I doubt we'd be able to really see it. Let's see. And yeah, Green Panthera. A lot of areas, even in California, have been having like a really nasty heat wave right now. And we've pretty much been spared of that here in the Bay Area. It's been just gorgeous for the past month or so. Longer, really. Um, the other night it was actually cold here. It was like high 40s, I think. Yeah. And we've got a lone mallard hanging out right there in the surf. Check her out. <laughs> oh, that one just flew by. There she goes. Yeah. Oh, and look at that pelican. Just, just gliding over the surface of the waves there. That's so cool. And I'll tell you a story about pelicans sometime. It's not my story. But, uh... Yeah, very cool story. Um, Museum of the Rockies history. All right, we're starting to get to a more interesting area now. Uh, this trail is going to lead us right down to Alameda Beach. And I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of people there because it is such a beautiful day. But we shall see. And there's San Francisco in the distance. Can you see it? There's Salesforce Tower. Really big tall one. You might be able to see a hint of the Bay Bridge right there. Leading up to the financial district. Yeah. And these are cool. Some kind of like seaside daisy. Um, I forgot, I used to know what these were called. They might be called sea daisies, or seaside daisies, or beach daisies, but really cool. And then we've got some, what are often called ice plants right there, also called sea figs. Those are not native to California. These are actually, uh, they're introduced from South Africa, I want to say. They are not from this area, but you'll see them all along California coastlines. I don't know who brought them here or when. But they've really kind of taken over, and uh, they like really kind of inhospitable sandy soils, like low nutrient soils. So they do really well around here, right on the uh, right on the water. Doesn't look like they're blooming right now, but they've got these actually pretty big, pretty flowers on them when they bloom. Destroy the 
don't know, Claire. Hey, I would be doing more harm than good. I'm not a botanist. I'm not a horticulturalist. Uh, hey, Lenina. Yeah. How are you doing? Welcome back. It's good to see you. Yeah. Um, and no, Death of Bunny, not hunting fossil shark teeth. I mean, it's not the intent. Um, just testing out some streaming gear and, uh, yeah, seeing if it works. Mm -hmm. And Izzy says that it's bees' first food once they're out of the hive from the winter. I bet you're probably right, yeah. In fact, I want to say, uh, I want to say I've seen a ton of bees and wasps around uh, ice plants before when they're in bloom. But yeah. Nice, Ellen. I'm glad you're having a good time. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Oh, y tap sold. Lo siento, mi español no es tan bueno. Let's see, para qué quieres un lanzallamas? ¿Qué es una lanzallamas? La lanzallamas. No sé, lo siento. Lanzayamas. It's got to have something to do with speech or uh, or names. Oh, it's a flamethrower. Oh, <laughs> tap sold. Ah, uh, no, this is an antenna. Um, uh, a receiving antenna. So this is collecting mobile data from the surrounding area and kind of concentrating it. I have. La, uh, la cosa roja. The red thing on my back is, uh, oh, here, I'm gonna interrupt this for a second here because we just had a curlew land over there. I wish I had it touching down. That is beautiful. Look at that super long bill. Pretty sure that's a curlew. I don't think it's a Dunlin or a Wimbrel or anything like that. The bill is too long. That's gotta be a curlew. Yeah. Very cool. It's gonna go probably pick some invertebrates out of the mud there. Very neat. Very, very neat. Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, it's not a flammer for, for my airspace. No, it's uh. So, like I was saying, so this device, uh. I got it so that I can use it in really remote areas that have pretty poor signal. Uh, so this is a, a signal booster setup that's designed for like an RV. Um, but I have it strapped to my back right now. So this is taking mobile data from surrounding areas and then it's running it through that uh, signal booster that's on my back. And then that goes to a secondary transmitting antenna um, that normally you put it like 20 feet away from the receiving antenna on an RV. I obviously don't have that kind of real estate, real estate on my body, and so I had to rig up like a uh, Faraday cage type deal um, with the uh, uh, with the wireless modems that the mobile live stream encoder is working off of right now. So it's a really complicated setup. Um, I just finished putting it together right before the stream this morning. I spent most of yesterday. Uh, or most of last night, really, trying to get it all all working together. And still a few kinks to work out, but it's working okay so far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's go see some more birds. Looks like that curlew flew away. Is it over there? Right now it is uh, 12 18 according to my watch. 18 minutes after noon. And I was supposed to be wrapped up by this point, but all those technical difficulties didn't get started until like an hour after uh, after I had scheduled things. Oh, 
there's some pelicans right there. Here, take a look. I think those are made out of concrete. I wonder how often live pelicans have walked up to those. Being like, oh, hey friend, how's it going? Ooh, there's a big jet taking off, you hear that? Yeah, let me show you. See it off in the distance there. Another Southwest flight. Southwest Airlines. It's all about the blue front and the red tail. And there's some pelicans doing their pelican thing over there. Man, they've got to be one of my favorite birds. Pelicans are something very special about them. All right, let's continue on here. Uh, <laughs> I've heard that before, yeah, yeah. Was that, who wrote that? Was that Nash? They are really cool critters, pelicans. Oh, and now, oh, there's a little turn. You see a little turn up there? <laughs> that is a least turn. You see how small it is? Yeah. Very cool. That's got to be a least turn. It's much too small to be a Forster's turn. Or, uh, what's the other one? Regal turn, royal turn. Something like that. There's another one. Flying up and down. Got those skinny little white wings and the little black head. Flying against the wind right there. Very cool. I hope you could see those. It's a little tricky sometimes. Go this way. These other beachgoers in space. And I hope that wind weasel is doing its job. I hope the wind noise isn't too bad right now. And let's see. You've only seen Arctic turns before that Sismo? Yeah, Dr. The Barney. These guys are pretty small. These are least turns, I think. Somebody can look that up. I'm pretty sure least turns are the smallest turns we have in the Bay Area. Um, yeah. Super Megalosaurus, hey! Welcome back. How are you doing? It has been a long time, I feel. How you doing? Um, testing out the uh, mobile live stream rig right now. This is the first time I've ever used the mobile data. Um, and it works! Yeah, the notification setup still needs some tinkering with before it's fully functional. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the setup so far. I think it's going to be pretty excellent for using during the rest of the summer. Um, turns for the worst, there you go, check nerd. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and Tropical, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my signal booster setup. There's the antenna right there. The red thing on the back, I don't know if you can see that, is uh, the actual signal booster device itself. And then uh, it's got a secondary antenna and a power source and all kinds of stuff. It's a pretty complicated setup. Um, but it appears to be working because you're watching me right now, right? see. Oh, broken computer? I'm sorry to hear that, Super Megalosaurus. I'm glad you're back, though. It's great to see you. Yeah. Now, everybody, Super Megalosaurus was actually one of my very first viewers, along with Mayor Space, way back in, well, like May of 2020, over a year ago. 
Yeah, it's great to have you back, Megaloceros. pelicans over there. They keep getting up and then settling back down again. <laughs> Seems like they all want to be in the front. Very cool. Death the Barney. Yeah, did anybody pick up Sorian while it was half price? It's a missed opportunity if you didn't. Yeah. And Tropical, I'm glad you like the, the uh, motion emotes. Yeah. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Uh, and thanks, Super Megaloceros. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, that's good feedback. So thank you. Yeah. What's holding the camera, Trek Nerd? It's, uh,. Well, it's just kind of hovering there. I got the special like drone set up. No, it's a uh, here. I I can't really show you without like I need like a mirror. I need to keep a mirror in my pocket so I can show you various things. But uh, yeah, it's a like a selfie stick, a telescoping one, um, which was actually purchased for me by a very loyal and generous viewer. So much of this gear actually was this uh, strap that's holding the phone in my arm. Uh, what else? I've got some straps from uh, the Lenina, some Velcro straps that I used to secure these cords. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, the uh, the mic too. And the Wind Weasel also sent by a viewer, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, I'm deeply grateful for everybody who's supported me in this endeavor. Couldn't do this without you, so thank you. All right, we're quickly approaching the actual beach part of Alameda Beach. Um, so we'll see how crowded it is. Usually there's a lot of people there, especially on a really nice day. So we'll see. And Prankster, I think the wish list might actually be empty at this point. Um, yeah. But I've got a Patreon if you want to support me. I don't know. Um, feels weird talking about that kind of thing. And this is pretty neat. Take a look at this sign. Marsh restoration in progress. So there's these kind of temporary pens that have been set up here to help protect some uh, native cord grass that's being reintroduced to this area. Pretty neat. That's kind of a cornerstone of the like seaside plant ecology here is native cord grasses. And a lot of them were wiped out in the 20th, like mid 20th century. Um, but there's lots and lots of species that rely on that for food. And so if we can bring back the cord grasses, we bring back native bird species, native mammals. Uh, there's a lot of invertebrates that I think live in cordgrass habitat. So it's pretty cool stuff. Oh, check this out. This log right here. Look at all these barnacles. Can anybody tell me what barnacles are? Like what kind of creature? Are they echinoderms? Are they, uh, are they related to worms or anemones? What do you think they're related to? Give me a guess. Uh, oh, and interesting, yeah, Death the Barney. That is a good idea. Some uh, PLA filament. Some good, uh, uh, what's the kind that I normally get? Shoot. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. I should put that on the wish list. Um, and Logan, they are indeed crustaceans. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Barnacles are actually a kind of animal. They're a kind of crustacean. They're related distantly, but still related to like crabs and lobsters and shrimp and krill and stuff like that. 
Um, and barnacles, before they become sessile, before they become, sta- become stationary later on in life, they actually start off mobile. Um, I don't know if they swim or if they drift with the current, but uh, yeah, they're mobile when they're little babies, little larvae, and then they eventually settle onto a substrate and encrust themselves onto it, and they build that shell around themselves. But the inside part is soft, and they put out these these little, almost like little squishy nets. I don't know what you would call them. They're like a little feathery kind of appendage, and they just kind of like sit there and they filter food particles out of the water. Um, they're pretty neat. Charles Darwin was like obsessed with barnacles. Um, he studied them extensively. Uh, I think before he came up with the idea of natural selection, um, he was like a barnacle specialist. I think that's right. There were other creatures that he focused on later on in life, like worms, like earthworms and stuff like that, um, and corals. But I'm pretty sure it was barnacles that were his, like, main fixation uh, around the time that he accepted the job on the HMS Beagle, I think. Um, yeah, they are arthropods indeed, Iridani. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> what in Barnish? There you go, Green Panther. Yeah. <laughs> the sound is great and crisp. Thank you, Tropical. That's good feedback. I'm glad to hear that. I am really lucky to have a really excellent mic. Um, with the wind weasel on it, it's like twice as big as the camera, which is funny. Um, but yeah, and yeah, Death of Barney, exactly. Darwin was a hot mess of interest. He had so many different things that he was interested in. Like a lot of, uh, I was going to say scientists, but that really wasn't a word that was in wide use at the time. The term scientist is a fairly new word to describe people who study, you know, the natural world. Um... Back then, they would have called themselves naturalists. And, yeah. And they did. It's funny, like, a lot of the kind of pioneering scientists, um, they get kind of idolized by people today. Um, and there's, there's good reasons for that, I guess. Um... And it's always good to realize that you're standing on the shoulders of geniuses and standing on the shoulders shoulders of giants, I should say. (laughs) Um, But at the same time, it's like, well, it was back before anybody really knew much of anything. It's so much more difficult to, to be a really good scientist and make really important discoveries nowadays. Well, in some respects it is, and in some respects it isn't. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. It's like as, as time and culture progresses, it's more and more difficult to kind of make a dent in any given field and, you know, really make revolutionary discoveries like that, you know? A lot of the low-hanging fruit or the fundamental stuff has already been, you know, been found. Um... Yeah. I'm sure that's true for, like, media and stuff as well. I mean, think about it. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, This is, like, kind of unrelated. But think about uh, Weird Al Yankovic. You know, the guy who makes the song parodies. Think about this long, illustrious career that he has had. Um, Where he got started in, what, like, the late 70s or something like that? Or early 80s? Um, And he was able to build a career out of doing song parodies. Of course, he was really good at it. But it's hard not to think that nowadays that would just be like a YouTube channel, you know? Um, The world is so much more full now than it was back then. And I don't know, it's just tougher to, to really make a dent, you know? At least that's the impression that I get. I could very well be wrong about that. Anyway, enough... Uh, philosophizing here. Let's continue on. Um, it is easier to just become famous by being a streamer. I guess it is. Well, but at the same time, though, it probably would have been easier at the very beginning of Twitch, right? Ooh. And something just scampered by. Oh, yeah. Ground squirrel. Look at the ground squirrel right there. <laughs> hey, little guy. 
Ooh. Neat. Um, yeah, I don't know. As, as stuff keeps filling up. Uh, I have... I guess the key is, like, get in early with stuff. <laughs> um, but it's, so much of it is luck. I mean, who knows which platforms are going to be the ones that succeed and which are going to fail. Look at something like uh, like Vine, you know? I don't even know what happened there, but... Yeah. Uh, there's so many unstudied niches. That's definitely true, Death of Barney, yeah. Yeah. Um, invertebrate biology, especially invertebrate paleontology, there's so much left to be discovered. Um, yeah. I've got some friends who work on fossil insects and uh, yeah, there's <laughs> it's like you could discover an entire order of new, you know, new fossil insects with just a couple of different specimens um, and like, you know, make a big difference there. So yeah, yeah. I guess that would be an example of a place where there's still a lot of room to make those kind of fundamental discoveries. You know? Um, yeah. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oops. Shoot, I feel like I just got a message and it disappeared. Um. Mm -hmm. Can we look around to where we are? Sure, tropical, yeah. Yeah. So I've been doing that a little bit, but I'll show you again. So, there is San Francisco, off in the distance. We're on Alameda right now. There's Bay Farm Island over there. And there's that bridge that we were walking across earlier in the stream. And we're going to go check out the actual beach part of Alameda Beach. So hang on just a minute and we'll go over there. Yeah. Make sure I don't get run over by any bicycles here. Let's see. Okay, cool tropical. Hopefully I'm not eating up all of my mobile data right now because I couldn't get the wireless router to work properly. Wow, there are already a lot of people at the beach. People setting up tents and stuff. I'll show you in just a minute. I wonder honestly how long uh, these apartments over here are going to last. Because um, already parts of the street will flood at high tide if we get like a super moon or something like that. Um, so I think a lot of these structures over here might not be long for this world. Um, hang on just a minute, I want to show you. We've got some cycads over here. Beautiful. Uh, gymnosperm plants over there. You see them? They look kind of like palms. Um, but they are not palms. Those are cycads. They're a kind of non-flowering plant that's been around since long before the dinosaurs. I think cycads first show up in like the early Permian or something like that. Um, one of my very favorite plants. And that particular species, that's Cycas revoluta. That is the most common cycad in cultivation. Chances are, if you see if you see a cycad in somebody's yard or in urban landscaping or something like that, that's what it is. It's what we call a sago cycad, Cycas revoluta. Uh, they're originally from Japan. Uh, really, really cool plants. I've got one at home in my apartment. Mm hmm. Let's see. And Linton Gamer, I have no idea what you're talking about. What? <laughs> Morose, huh? I'm sorry, Linton Gamer. It's good to see you back, though, by the way, Linton Gamer. I feel like it's been a while. How you doing? Alright, here's Alameda Beach. 
here. You can see San Francisco off in the distance there, and there's already a lot of people here. There's a little seawall that was built there to, I take it, probably keep the beach from eroding completely. Um, I don't know enough about this kind of thing. If you were to talk to a geologist or maybe a hydrologist, maybe a geo-hydrologist, they'd be able to tell you about wave patterns and, um, you know, the particular types of currents that dominate certain areas. But, uh, yeah, this seems to be one of those beaches where the sand gets to, it seems to mostly get pushed in a southward direction. So I guess they built that seawall there to keep all the sand from going south and uh, kind of moving into that estuary. Yeah, this is kind of interesting too. Right here we have a bird sanctuary. This is the gated area. And I've been here, if we were here at low tide, you'd probably see hundreds upon hundreds of sanderlings and dunnelins and wimbrels and other little shorebirds in there. But since the water's so high right now, they've gone elsewhere. And uh, tons of people over here at the beach. So, let's go walk that way. Um, oh shoot, I'm sorry, Litten Gamer. PC's hard drive got broken? Well, it's good to see you. Hope you've been doing well. Yeah. And the one time we're at the beach is the one time we're at, we aren't listening to Surf Rocky on the airspace. Um, I could have tried to rig that up today, but I wanted to focus on the notifications. And now the notifications aren't working. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let me, uh... Ah. So we'll see what kind of birds we can see. Usually the birds don't like to hang out here when there's a bunch of people, but we'll see. Uh, it is high tide, is he? Yeah. Um, and one Patu, that's probably a big part of it too. It's probably to save that marshland as well. Barney, that sounds really neat. Yeah, it's always cool to, to re-examine fossils that you found a long time ago. And kind of revisit the past like that in more ways than one. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm surprised at how crowded it is. It is Thursday, I suppose. It is Friday, I suppose. Some people get Fridays off. Oh, and uh, uh, Nick Adamus. Yeah, I live over in Oakland. Um, but I'm right over here in Alameda right now, yeah. And I don't have to worry about stream sniping, do I? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah. Interesting, solid gray fox. And you're not into insects anymore? What happened? What changed? Insects are really, really fascinating creatures. And, uh, I don't know, if you wanted to go into one of the fields of biology and, like, you know, actually name a bunch of new species or something like that, your best bet might be insects. Especially things like beetles or wasps or really anything though. Uh, well, probably not Lepidopterans. They're probably like, they're such a charismatic group. I bet you that if you want to study, you know, butterflies or moths, I think most of the ones to be discovered have already been discovered, I would imagine. But, I don't know. Beetles. 
no way. There's so many beetles left to be found. Somebody once told me that also wasps might actually outnumber beetles because there's like uh, ichnomoid, ichnomonid wasps. I forget how you say that. They're the ones that like paralyze their host and then lay their eggs in it. The larvae like eat the host alive. But apparently, so I've been told, there are, there's basically a species, like for every species of beetle, there's also a species of wasp that specifically preys upon that beetle. I don't know if that's true, but uh, ichthymonid wasps are incredibly speciose. They're super diverse, there's so many different kinds. And TJ Girl wanna see, oh, for ants, interesting. Uh, oh, cool, Death of Barney. Yeah, very cool. I saw a parasitic wasp with uh, my students a few months ago, and uh, that was pretty magical. She had this great, great, big, long stinger thing, and uh, the kids were like, what is that? Because it was like longer than her body when it was extended all the way. And I said, that's her ovipositor. That is basically what she uses, I think, A, to sting her prey, but also to deposit the eggs inside of its body. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And so ovipositor was like the word of the day that day. Uh, yeah, it was pretty neat. Anyway, you might have a better view of San Francisco right now. See that off in the distance? There's the financial district with uh, Salesforce Towers, the really tall one. You can see the Bay Bridge just off to the right there. Uh, that really pointy one on the right side, pointy building is the Transamerica Pyramid. And then there's Sutro Tower way over there. There's like the Mission District. And then go further south and that's where San Francisco International Airport is down there. Uh, or no, probably down there. Um, yeah, San Jose and Silicon Valley are way off in that direction. And there you could actually just see the very tip of the control tower for Oakland International Airport peeking up above those trees and above those houses. It's the kind of like, uh, it's got a flat top to it and then it kind of comes in and then flares out again. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see that stuff with this camera right now. But overall, I've been very impressed with how this camera works. It's, uh, it's pretty excellent. I was hoping that we'd see a bunch of beach birds here. But it seems like they have all retired for the time being, except for a handful of crows and gulls over there. I haven't seen many ground squirrels either. We'll have to come back another time when it's not as busy here. You hit this a little bit earlier in the day, hopefully at low tide. And uh, yeah, yeah. For the time being, I'm gonna go walk in that direction. And. Uh, Go back toward where we started. Uh, wild hominids on the beach. There you go, green fat there. <laughs> uh, and interesting, yeah. Solid gray fox. Dragonflies are they're re remarkably powerful flyers. Um, they actually use both sets of their wings for propulsion. Um, there are other kinds of volant insect, flying insects like, you know, like houseflies. Uh, and they only use one set of wings for flying. Their second set of wings, they become like little weird, like club-like things, like short little appendages that they use for kind of like changing direction rapidly. So I think ancestrally, all flying insects have two sets of wings. And some of them, uh, like their second set of wings evolved for some other purpose, like it, you know, it changed over time. Uh, like I'm pretty sure there's like shell casing thing on over beetle's wings. I think the shell cases were originally wings, but I'm not positive. Somebody in chat could either confirm or deny that, I'm sure. Yeah, and Izzy, dragonflies were a whole lot bigger. Um, 
during like the Carboniferous period, long before the dinosaurs. Um, there were great big dragonfly-like creatures, like Meganuera. They had a wingspan of, shoot, close to two feet. So like, I think 22 inches might be the record. Something like that. Yeah, they weren't true dragonflies as I understand it, but they're like close relatives. And if you were to see one alive, you would probably assume it was a dragonfly. And all kinds of people over here at the beach. Um, it's much more crowded than I've typically seen it on a Friday. But I'm sure tomorrow it's going to be totally packed. That's how it usually goes here. And they were bigger thanks to the more... Yeah, polar bear, they, there was more oxygen. Again, I should emphasize, this is long before the first dinosaurs. This is in the Carboniferous period, like... 350 million years ago, something like that. If I had my time chart, I could tell you for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. There were higher oxygen levels at the time. And then... From what I understand, there was basically like this... Uh, this cycle where higher oxygen levels led to more intense wildfires, which led to an increase in carbon levels. And eventually, um, things just kind of stabilized. And by the time, you know, the like, after the Permian mass extinction, I think oxygen levels were a lot lower on Earth. Uh, so like the time that the first dinosaurs show up, I think oxygen levels are actually lower than they are today. Or at least that's the current thinking, I want to say. I don't know, I should... I'm excited to have some conversations with people over the summer about this sort of thing. People who know a lot more than me about ancient climates and that kind of thing. To see what the current consensus really is in the scientific community. And are there seashells there or just sand? Well, let me show you, Tropical. Let's take a look at some of the sand. There are! of shell there, for sure. Yeah. Um, this is probably... I'm not sure what kind of creature this is from specifically. Um, it doesn't look like abalone. But yeah. But yeah, most of the sand is like quartz-based. So I don't know how well you can see the grains there. But, uh, yeah. I don't know if you could quite call it a white sand beach. It's not made from corals, I can tell you that. Um, yeah, a tan sand beach? Is there a name for this sort of thing? I don't know. Yeah. Interesting green paint there, yeah. Wikipedia on Megan Ware. Yeah. It's a sand, sand color sand. Just sand, says TJ. Oh. There you go. We've got a helicopter approaching. Which one is that? I don't know. I've gotten to know some of the helicopters in my neighborhood. <laughs> There's a few that are always seem like they're buzzing overhead. And this, I think, is a news chopper right there. I don't know if you can hear it. But... There it is. Is that channel 7? No. Huh. Yeah. And Evo Hyro. Why different beaches have different types of sand? That's a great question. So, it all has to do with we well, have to ask yourself, what is the sand made out of? Um, in places like uh, like Hawaii, you might have black sand beaches. That black come that black color comes from lava rocks, from igneous rocks, like lava that had cooled. Um, be very like mafic rock. It's a very dark colored, and then it just gets ground down over time, kind of turned into dust, and then you get sand. So that's where black sand beaches come from. 
like Hawaii or Iwo Jima or places like that. They're famous for their black sand. Um, that also tends to be really fine sand too. It's usually not super like chunky and coarse. It's usually very smooth and fine like dust. Um, white sand beaches are usually made, they're formed from coral. And it's kind of a funny thing. People love white sand beaches, like, oh, the smooth white sand. It's so beautiful, it's so fine. And they don't realize that's parrotfish poop. Um, there's various kinds of fishes that live on coral reefs and they actually eat the coral. So they'll eat the soft body part of the coral animal, the polyp, but they'll also crunch up like the hard stony part. Um, it's usually made of I think coral's usually made of aragonite. Do I have that right? Aragonite? Uh, but yeah, these fish will actually grind that up with their teeth. And then of course they poop out the dust and that later becomes the white sand of a white sand beach. Uh, the sand here is mostly made of like ground up rocks. It's got a lot of quartz in it. Um, that's why it's got kind of like a shimmery kind of glassy quality. Um, and it tends to be pretty irregular in grain size, too. It's really interesting, like, um, when I've done, like, sed strat, sedimentary stratigraphy, like looking at different rock layers around, you know, Hell Creek Formation, Judith River Formation. When you're digging up dinosaurs, it's really important to pay really close attention to the rocks because that gives you context. It gives you data to help understand what was going on in those ancient environments. Um, and so I learned how to how to basically read the rocks and figure out what was going on at the time. So you can like say that you look really, really closely at some rock layers, and you uh, you basically find ways to like measure the coarseness of the sand, say in some sandstone. And usually sand tends to fine upwards. So like the coarsest sand will be at the bottom of of a sand layer and it'll become progressively more fine toward the top. Um, and this is usually like in a fluvial environment. You've got a lot of energy that's depositing sand in a certain place. Um, but then as that basin tends to fill up or as like the energy diminishes, it can, you know, like only carry certain grains of sand anymore. So it tends to get finer and finer and finer. And then something might change and then you have deposition that stops and then it starts again. It starts off again and then it finds upward so it's it's cool to kind of be able to figure out what was going on in an ancient environment um, just by looking at something really simple like grain size in the rocks it's really neat how something as simple as a rock layer can tell a story um, leave the what there you go green panther <laughs> but yeah and Shaley O'D, hey, holy cow, thank you for the four months. I really appreciate that. And notifications are not working right now, so I'm going to take this earbud out. Um, yeah. Make sure I put that in my pocket so it doesn't fall out. There we go. Yeah. Did the stream freeze? I hope not, Terminator. Did it freeze? Yeah. Maybe it cut out for a second. That is something that will happen with mobile live streams this summer. That's just part of IRL mobile live streaming. Mm -hmm. And Feral Terminator, thank you so much for the seven months. I really appreciate that. Wow. That's lovely. Um, your support means a lot to me. <laughs> Don't you love that when somebody like riding a bike or running, you know, clearly they haven't yet mastered headphones technology. They just have to broadcast it really loud to everybody. <laughs> I say this, I'm trying to say this quietly so I'm not being obnoxious. But yeah. Hey, Indian player. Yeah, testing the uh, mobile live stream gear and the data. 
It's a beautiful day here in Alameda, California. Again, thank you everybody who's tuning in for this right now. Started more than an hour late <laughs> because just couldn't get the darn thing to work properly. And there's so many different moving pieces and you got them got to get them all to work in conjunction with each other in just the right order and there's no instruction manual for this kind of thing. You just got to keep tinkering with it until it works. And when it stops working, I think there's a hundred different reasons why it might have done that. But let me get the hang of it. It's working so far. Ooh, that sounded like a lizard. Shoot. Oh yeah, a fence lizard over there. Went into the bushes or I would show you. We actually got a surprising number of lizards here in the Bay Area. Fence lizards, alligator lizards, various kinds of skinks. I saw an anole once, which is not native. It must have been an escaped pet. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Mirror space, there you go, yeah. yeah. Some people just have nothing better to do. You know what? Good for them. He's like, uh, he's live streaming without a camera. You know? Yeah, and yeah, you've got anoles back home, tropical? Yeah. Yeah, Puerto Rico, Florida, Cuba. Those are great places to find lizards. Holy cow. Oh, and I see some little birds over there. I wish we could get a little closer, but we don't want to disturb them. But just on that mud flat over there, you've got... Is that a killdeer? Or a sandpiper? Or a plover? Can't really tell. Right there on the mud flat. And then we've got some pelicans over there. Yeah. Pretty neat. So lucky to live close to here. I, n I try to never forget that, you know? Try and be grateful. Yeah. Good afternoon to you too, Feral Terminator. Good to see you. Yeah. Modern dinosaurs, exactly, Nin player. Yeah, getting some modern theropods. They're taking off now. Those pelicans. You see them cruising back down. Very cool. <laughs> like a half-hearted plunge into the water there. It's really cool to see them go way up high and then spot a fish and then just come crashing down. It's such a dramatic way of feeding. Um, it's pretty special to be able to see. I'm keeping an eye over in that direction just to see if any of the pelicans that are flying higher up do that. And that sounded like a sanderling over there. Let's see. Some more pelicans. Some decent speed going. There's some over there, way up there. Circling around. There's some more. I bet you there are certain times of day that are best for spotting fishes. Um, I don't know if it would be like dawn and dusk when the rays of light are kind of at their most indirect. I know from experience those are some of the best times to find fossils. Some of the best dinosaur specimens I've ever found have been uh, like at dusk or as the sun is starting to go down. Ooh, there's pelican dropping down. Does he see something? No, just making a slow descent. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, hey, Melissa and Danelle, thank you. Yeah, this took a lot of work to put together. Um, uh, hot dog eating on the come here, space. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what you, what you would call that. 
Um, high volume feeding. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, I'll see if I can get us closer to some pelicans, maybe. Have some water, too. Oh, and in player, I'm sorry for that poor cat. Um, it is cool to see vultures do their thing, but unfortunately that's often the result of some other poor creature losing its life. Mass ingestion event, I love that too, because, <laughs> yes, yeah. And there's some little turns flying around over there in front of the pelicans. You see them? They're swooping up and then diving back down. There you go, did you see that? There's another one. I wonder if they caught anything. And being a shorebird seems like it might be a pretty good life. I don't know, get to hang out by the beach all day. Um, it's easy to stay cool. Just dive into the water. I'd imagine there's not a huge shortage of food. Probably don't have to deal with, like, neighborhood cats as much. Like songbirds might. Yeah, currently recorded Danny, there you go. <laughs> Oh, I think those are the some of the native cord grasses. See these stands of grass right here? I bet you that's what those are. I've seen a lot of these in the North Bay, near like Point Reyes, Sea Ranch, that area. Right here. Very cool. Pelicans are having a pelican party over there. Seem like they're enjoying themselves. Like I said, it seems like a good life. American black vultures, interesting in player. I don't know if I've ever seen those before. We get turkey vultures here in the Bay Area. Um, there used to be a flock of turkey vultures that lived in a great big eucalyptus tree behind my mom's house growing up. I'd see them hanging out there on rainy days. It'd just be like, Sitting there brooding all together, like five or six of them. Um, and you see them soaring around, especially in like suburban or rural areas in the Bay Area. But I don't know if I've ever seen American black vultures. I want to say those are more common in like, I don't know, Louisiana, Florida, you know, that area. But I'm not sure. I um, might be mistaking them with Egyptian vultures. Look at this little dock over here again. Again, there's San Francisco over there, just to give you some bearings. Bay Farm Island over here. That's where Oakland Airport is. There's the bridge that we walked across, and then there's Alameda again. There's those concrete pelicans. beautiful day. It was just windy enough. It doesn't really feel too hot. 
It's only in like the mid 70s, but still. Just a gorgeous day. I'd say this has been a pretty successful test so far. I'm excited to use this for the rest of the summer. Hopefully we can bring in some donations and stuff too, because this is not cheap to do. Holy cow, does this, uh, the data for this is... <laughs> And how is the bed right right now? Is it uh It looks like we may have lost signal for a moment or something. Uh, but how are we doing right now? Looks good. Thanks, Bonapata. Excellent. Shows 5,700. I don't have any frame of reference there. That's probably pretty good. Actually, I think that's really good. Um, don't get used to this every... Oh! Look at that heron! Yeah! Beautiful heron there. There's two of them. Very cool. Wow, hope we didn't bother them. And there's a curlew over there, too. Here, check that out. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but look at the... at the edge of those... that ice plant stand over there. So the, bill with the, really, the bird with the really long bill, just poking its head up. That is a curlew. I'm not sure what kind of curlew, but it's a curlew. It's up by the really long, droopy bill. So I grew up seeing these in like wetland areas and near the beach um, so I was very surprised to encounter like hundreds of them out in the middle of the prairie in central Montana um, but apparently that's where they go during the summer uh, they are I think it's like greater curlews or something But they love to hang out over by cattle ponds and stuff, and I think that might be... It might be where they raise their young? I'm not sure. To look into that. Yeah, such a cool bird. The bills are, like, longer than their bodies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today you learned how curlew is pronounced. Yeah, Wanapata. <laughs> what did you think it was before, if you had to guess? Yeah. And Red Stallion, yeah, thanks. Um, seems to be working pretty well so far. I like it. Probably gonna be wrapping up the stream pretty soon here. I've shown you pretty much everything I can in this area right now. And I've got a bunch of other stuff that I gotta get done today. Preparing to uh, to leave next week on my big uh, Rocky Mountain region summer long road trip. So I'm gonna work out some of the final details for that. And work out logistics and everything. But yeah, really looking forward to it. And yeah, right, Kira? I'm excited, too. And this would be a lovely day to go swimming. I wish the pool were open in my dad's place, but I still don't think it is. All right, Kelly, yeah. It's not the easiest word to pronounce, necessarily. Um, it's kind of a strange one.
And uh, Kasandku says, I like your stream. I'm from the Denver area. Hey! Well, greetings from uh, Alameda, California, in the beautiful San Francisco Bay Area. Hope you're having a good day. Um, normally, my streams are from indoors, or they have been up until this point. Um, I'm a dinosaur paleontologist, you know, go over all kinds of fossil news, I answer all sorts of questions about dinosaurs and about the history of life on our beautiful planet. Um, but this summer, I'm going to be streaming, uh, you know, like this, <laughs> doing mobile live streams. I'm going to be visiting a bunch of different dinosaur museums around the Intermountain West, visiting some dinosaur quarries, maybe even doing some field work here or there. Uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So, if you're interested in that kind of thing, I encourage you to follow along. It should be a really good time. Yeah, just pull in that house, pay them a visit. Yeah, I want a pot. I wish I could. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, Dino Road Trip fossil though. Um, hey, Matthew Crosshead, how are you doing? Welcome. It's good to see you. Let me just say, I'm so glad that, well, I don't know. I set all this stuff up purposefully, like everything's arranged. There's a reason why everything is where it is. There's a reason why this antenna is on this side of the backpack. It's because it fits perfectly, you know, with my hat. Um, imagine if it were over here, be hitting the brim the whole time. So I'm glad that everything just kind of fit together really nicely. This is going to be a good summer. I hear another big old jet taking off from the airport. Where is it? It's probably going in the other direction. It's funny, when you're like just the right distance from an airport where it's still loud, but you're far enough away, it really makes you appreciate the fact that light travels faster than sound. <laughs> um, because by the time you hear the jet, like it's already taken off and it's already over there. Um, yeah. There's a big fat ground squirrel over there in the middle of the path. See it? <laughs> yeah, he's a chunky one. Look at that. the same ground squirrel we saw earlier? I bet you it is. Hey, ground squirrel. Here, back again. How are you doing? <laughs> you having a good day? So, I don't mean to corner you. I'll keep going. Presumably that guy's like talking into a phone <laughs> so much more loudly than I am, but I don't know. I'm really self-conscious about this sometimes. I don't want to be obnoxious when I'm live streaming, you know? Um, I don't want to be disruptive of anybody else while they're out doing their thing on any given day. But yeah, anywho. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So thank you everybody for tuning in today. This has been a lot of fun. I would say it's been a pretty successful test. Um, so yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, San Francisco is not next to Los Angeles, Guadalajara. That's really funny. Someday it will be because of the way that you know that California is kind of being shorn by tectonic forces. Uh, yeah, someday Los Angeles will continue its, you know, very slowly it's being pushed northward and San Francisco is being pushed southward. Um, so yeah, someday they'll be next to each other, but not yet. Um, but anyway, yeah, 
And Adrian Leone, that is not a gun. No, it's an antenna. Uh, for the mobile live stream setup. I gotta put a flag on it or paint it or something so people stop asking me that. I don't want to look intimidating, you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, thank you for the for being here, Izzy. It's been great having you here. And let's see. I open this up in Twitch, I think. Let's see. Who is uh, Who's live right now? That we can uh, we can pay a raid to. Does anybody have any idea? Um, let's see. I want to say. Mm -hmm. Great stream. Thanks, Ice Allen. Hey, does anybody else know of any science streamers who are online right now whom we can raid? Um, oh, there we go. Mary's Milk Monster. That's a great idea. Uh, thank you, Mayor Space. She doesn't have any, um, monsters. No, monsters. Shoot, if I could type this correctly, that would be good. Mary's Mill Monsters. No. Mary's Milk Monsters. She has no um, underscores or anything, or spaces, right? Uh... Oh, and it's not letting me raid her for some reason. Um... We'll try Critter Vision. Oh! Oh, it's already working. Okay. Everybody, I will see you next time, okay? Everybody, you have a wonderful day. And uh, I'll catch you on the next stream. Thanks for being here, everybody.